You might have noticed that no iPhone has ever had a dual SIM card, and probably never will. Well, it seems to me that's remarkable. The software of the phones that have a dual SIM card has to support it. If you look up the iOS's source code, you won't find anything related to two SIM card capabilities. This technology requires transceiver for each SIM card, which of course adds to the cost of production of a cell phone. So if an iPhone had one, the model would be more expensive. More expensive? Also, this feature would increase battery consumption rate, so the battery wouldn't last as long. Seems like the company opts for not having the dual SIM slot. Instead, the latest iPhone models support the eSIM feature that acts like a dual SIM slot. But this second SIM card isn't a physical card, but a digital one. To use it, you just have to upload all the information in your cell phone. To get one, just go to a cellular plan that provides the option and ask for an eSIM. You'll get a QR code that you'll need to scan and add the new cellular plan to your device. Or you can type in the details manually. Then just add the labels to your SIM cards to remember which is, for example, a business SIM and which one is personal, and you can start using both. Another thing iPhone has never had is a back button. Even back in the day when there was a physical button on the cell phone, it was a home button. This drives people who have never used an iPhone crazy. But the reason for not adding the back one is simple. A swipe from left to right serves this function. So there's no need for an actual button. You probably know that pressing a button on the side of your cell phone, you can mute your phone so that you don't hear any calls or notifications. But there's one or several people you wouldn't want to miss a call from. You can unmute them. This way, you won't hear any calls from everyone else, but this person will reach you easily. Like your mom. Wait, no? To do this, go to your contacts, find the person, tap Edit Contact, and switch on the Emergency Bypass mode. Now, even when your phone is muted, when this person calls you, you'll hear it. Sometimes we have to give our phone to someone so that they can play on it or read or scroll through some photos. The fact of giving away your cell phone to someone might make you fear that the person will end up peeking into some personal info. To help you keep your peace of mind, there's a guided access feature on your iPhone that, when activated, will not allow the person to leave the app. To activate it, go to Settings, Accessibility, and then scroll down to find the guided access. Enable it and set a passcode. There's also a way to hide some of your photos. To do this, open the photo you want to hide, tap the Share button, and then tap Hide. To find the hidden album, go to Photos, then Albums, and scroll down till under Utilities, where you'll see the hidden album. Which is really not that hidden because everyone can access it anyways if they find it. If you don't want the hidden album to show up, you can hide it for good. Go to Settings, then Photos, scroll down, and switch off the hidden album mode. It's turned on by default, so this way, you'll make it disappear. To bring it back, switch the hidden album back on. You can add captions to your photos. If you do this, you won't need to scroll through all of your photos to find the one you need. So, you took a photo of a bus schedule. Ooh, nice composition. Open the picture, swipe up, and you'll see the Add a Caption field. Type in a keyword such as bus, duh, and then done. If you ever need it later, instead of scrolling down through all of your photos, you can simply go to the search field, type in bus, and the photo will pop up. Usually, the last photo you've made or downloaded becomes the thumbnail photo of the album. You can change it and set as a thumbnail whatever one you like. Just go to the album, find the one, tap and hold it, and then select Make Key Photo. You're taking a screenshot to show one particular app to a friend. If you take just a simple screenshot, you'll have to specify in the message which row it's in. Instead, after taking a screenshot, tap on it. When you're in the editing mode, tap on the plus button, then on the magnifier. This feature will add a magnifying circle to your photo, which will zoom into a particular space. Simply adjust its size and the degree of zooming in or out to magnify a specific thing on the screenshot. 
In Safari, you can make a screenshot of the whole page at once, not only the part that's on your screen. Take a regular screenshot and then tap on it to go to the editing mode. On the top panel, select the option Full Page. Now you can see the picture of the whole page. You can also pick how to crop it if you only want a part of it, but it's definitely handy because you don't have to do several screenshots anymore. If there's a phrase or an email that you use a lot but are tired of typing over and over again, you can add a shortcut for it. For example, your full address. Go to Settings, then to General, Keyboard, and Text Replacement. There, you can add shortcuts. Type in the address in the Phrase field and come up with a shortcut for it. Now, when you type, for example, address, your full address will pop up in the suggestions and you'll never have to type it all over again. To quickly send someone your current location via messages, just type in I'm at. The option of current location will pop up and you can just tap on it. Use it when you park your car. Once parked, just send yourself your current location so that later you can find your car. Well, more easily. Another typing trick is to use numbers. If you need to type in a number, you probably tap the 1, 2, 3 to go to the Symbols menu, then pick a number, then tap ABC to come back. This is pretty annoying. Instead, just press and hold the 1, 2, 3 menu. The numbers will appear, so you can simply move your finger towards the digit you need. Once you remove your finger, you'll be back to the text menu and you can keep typing. You can turn your iPhone keyboard into a trackpad. To activate it, press anywhere on the keyboard and hold it for a while. When it's activated, you can move your finger around and the cursor will move. If you press a bit harder, you'll select a word. This feature is available if you have an iPhone with 3D Touch. There is also a quicker way to close all your applications. You probably swipe them up one by one and sometimes it takes forever. You can do it three times faster if you use three fingers when swiping. This way, you'll be swiping away three tabs at once. If you mistype a digit in a calculator, you probably clear it all and start all over again. Tell me about it. On the top of the screen where the digits are displayed, swipe to the side, and this movement will serve as a backspace command to remove the last number you entered. If you need to change the time of some event in your calendar, you don't necessarily have to tap on the event, edit it, and set the new time. Instead, just tap on the event, press it, and drag it to another time slot. If you go back to sleep to music or a podcast, there's a way to set a timer so that it doesn't keep playing all night long. To do this, go to Clock, then Timer. Set the time, and then go to the When the Timer Ends option. Scroll down till the very end, and you'll find the Stop Playing button there. Press it, and then tap Done. After the time you've set, your media will stop playing in the background. Hey, you'll be asleep, but you know, trust me.